In this brief video, we will be discussing the differences between primary and secondary sources in historical research and historical writing. Primary sources are documents or artifacts that have um, survived time and wound up in our hands to help us in our understanding of the past. A primary source typically is created by somebody who um, witnessed the events or had first-hand knowledge of the events and generally comes from the time that you are studying. This particular slide shows you some examples of primary sources that historians use. Um, you can add to this also the growing trend toward using oral history or information that is passed down from generation to generation. Some cultures have been uh, much more successful at saving their history through oral tradition rather than written tradition, but up, up until the past few decades, historians have been reluctant to use oral history. That is, that is really changing in the last few decades. All sources have inherent problems and primary sources are not immune to that. Um, some primary sources are biased in terms of their viewpoint, either in terms of methodology or in terms of uh, the way that the author or creator viewed the world. Uh, sometimes creators of documents and sources don't tell you all the information that you might want to know. Um, sometimes they'll leave things out that are important to know. So in the case of uh, Napoleon III, who we see pictured here, um, he was a, a especially careful documenter of his own record and left out information that uh, historians might be interested in, but he felt would uh, tarnish his image. People sometimes self-promote. Uh, they distort. They work in... Um, conjunction either with governments or corporations to produce propaganda. Um, sometimes there are outright lies and forgeries that have uh, survived. So it's, uh, it's important to understand the quality of the primary source that you're using as well as um, any agenda that the author might have had or the creator might have had. Secondary sources differ from primary sources in that the creators of these sources did not necessarily take part in the events being depicted. Um, usually these are generalizations and synthesized interpretations of the past. In this image you see a book, uh, a famous book about the Holocaust by Lucy Davidovitz called The War Against the Jews. So this is a, a history of the Holocaust. Um, interestingly, Lucy Davidovitz also spent some time um, in Nazi Germany um, at the beginning of the Holocaust, and fortunately for for us as scholars, uh, she left before she became a victim of the Holocaust. So she brings with her a little bit of uh, on-the-ground experience, which helps enlighten her work. But again, this is a uh, a secondary source that relies on primary sources to tell. Uh, like primary sources, secondary sources have their own inherent problems. Because secondary sources typically did not see the events or did not participate in the events, they don't have that first-hand knowledge and they're relying on other sources to, uh, to inform them and enlighten them. If a historian or other scholar chooses poor quality primary sources, um, their interpretation might be skewed or f flawed or problematic. Um, if the scholar um, is very selective in the documents and sources that are chosen, um, they might intentionally omit things, they might unintentionally omit things, or they might uh, choose documents, sometimes we call this cherry picking, uh, that seem to be fitting their argument better. Uh, just like primary sources, the authors of secondary sources can have their own methodological biases or their own political biases as well. 
Um, very occasionally scholars will look at a set of documents and come up with um, inaccurate or flawed analyses. Um, so you can't always assume that a secondary source, even though this is a perhaps even a peer-reviewed book by a scholar, um, it's necessarily good analysis. Um, at times, historians have written books based on either inadvertent or deliberate data that is fraudulent. And finally, um, some historians and some scholars um, use their positions as uh, authoritative figures to push propaganda for governments, corporations, or their own agendas.